Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, uh, <clears throat> Passover, even though it it begins tonight and ends on the 13th, I believe it is, 13th of the evening, uh, it's another equinox. It's like, it's what I'm trying to explain how Easter, um, how um, well, Passover, of course, how Palm Sunday, these are all those days. There, there's ne not a structured date for these, like Christmas is de December 25th, because it falls on different days. So that's why you say, what date is Easter on? Well, it depends on what. <laughs> and, 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 and things fall on different dates, of course, but, but they're all significant and they're important. And how many remember, uh, this isn't actually the, the message. I just wanted to kind of lay something out. How many remember the, that show was with Moses? Was that Ten Commandments? The one with the death angel coming through? You remember how it showed the smoke or the fog creeping by the moon? And then it comes through and and you hear all the people screaming and hollering, you know, because the death angels going through or, or destroyers going through and and uh there's this guy standing out there in that show. And he sees it and he runs in there where Charlton Heston is. I, guess, I think it's him. I don't know. But he runs in and, and he says, come in, come in. You know, and he, <laughs> he goes inside and they shut the door. I'm not, I don't mean to be laughing, but it's like he's out there standing there looking at it. Because in the in instructions in the Word, it says, go inside. Don't go out. Okay. I wouldn't be hanging out there looking at something I know is going to destroy me. But I know that the curiosity, people want to see those things. But the way they made that way back in the day, it really creepy, but real cool. You know, I don't know if you can put those words together, but it was real neat. And how they put that together. But the thing was, what was so neat about Passover is because you took the lamb and you put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel and the enemy would pass by, or not, not the enemy, but the destroyer would pass by that home. And, uh, you know, I think we need to imagine something with communion here. We're going to do communion here in just a minute. Because when you take that, the destroyer has no right to your body. Has no right to your finances. Guess what? Has no right to your sanctity. And so we got to start stepping into what God has for us. And I'm, I'm excited about something that's going to be so simple that I'm going to minister about tonight. And I'm actually going to preach out of Psalms 23. And uh, I really love that. And the first time I ever heard about Psalms 23 was probably back in 1984. And uh, the, the church that we were in, um, and it was before I was married to my wife, there was a, a Bible study they did. Now, I wasn't even reading the Bible back then. And there was a book that was released called A Shepherd Looks at 23rd Psalms by Philip Keller. And it's a detailed study on Psalms 23. And so it goes through what that is and everything. And I, I had no clue what I was listening to. But I can remember it to this day, and it blessed my soul. And, uh, of course, a lot of people have the 23rd Psalm memorized. Some do, some don't. But that doesn't matter. It, it's powerful on the basis of how what it's about. But here's what's real neat. I want you to think about this as I go into the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As we go into this. Now watch this, Psalms 23, Psalms 22 right before it. And I want you, who said this? Who, who can you remember saying this in the Bible? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Who said that? Because that's how Psalms 22 starts. Now, the last, the, the word right before the last word of Psalms 22 is the word done. And in the Amplified, it says, it is finished. Who said that? Jesus. If you go to the middle of Psalms 22, it talks about, 
everything that happens to Jesus. Now, this is David writing about something that hadn't even happened yet. Psalms 22 reveals everything that happens with him and the Lord. And then the, it says the last word, it is finished. And then Psalms 23 is, is put out. The Lord is my shepherd, right? Now, a shepherd, what we need to realize is, means to feed, to guide, or to shield you. He is to feed, to guide, and to shield you. And if that's not happening, ask him. Amen? Because it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And what's the very next thing? I shall not want. You know, and you can look at a lot of different translations and a lot of different things, but the word want means lack. You shall not lack. You shall not be without. You shall not be wanting. So, well, I am wanting. So, well, something's wrong. We need to figure out why. Why is that going on? Um, I can't say that yet. You know, I thank God for how he lays things out in my life. And, and, and we need to realize sometimes we go through things because we don't realize he's setting you up for something else. Right. Amen. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in what kind of pastures? Green. It didn't say burn up one. It didn't say uh, yellow ones. Green. What does green mean? That's healthy. Of course, it means some scratch, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> but green means something that's right. That's what'd you say? Nourished. Nourished. And what'd you say? Good. good. It's nourishing. It's good. It's something we need. But watch. Here's the word that gets missed there. He makes you lie down. Because some people will not lie down. He makes you lie. He's trying to give you rest. Because we get so worried and so worried about different things. He makes you lie down. And But watch. If you lie down, if you will make your own self lie down, he will talk to you. In other words, stop and listen to the Lord. Because we, we so many times don't do that, you know. And when he makes you lie down, what, what I thought was so interesting, and I actually got this, and I remembered this from 1984. Because the very next verse is, he leads me beside, what kind of waters? Still. Not rushing water. Now, Philip Keller said, when he actually looked at this, I don't even have the book anymore, but I can remember this being taught. And it just stuck in my head. Uh, they say, you know how sheep are, they're all confused. If one jumps off a cliff, they'll all jump. You know how they are. <laughs> but if they walk up to a rushing water, it makes them get all antsy because it's, it's rushing, and they'll start running in all different directions. But if something's still, they're tranquil, and they will drink. Right? So he leads you beside still waters. Right? Something that's tangible you can drink. Yeah. Something that you can gain from. Amen? You know, um, and if you can do that, if you can drink something like that, He restores you. But, I mean, well, actually, it says He restores my soul. Now, remember, what's the soul? Your mind, will, and emotions. How many of us can have some emotions restored? I'm, I'm more like a lot of you than you think. I go through a lot of things just like anybody else. But I tell you what, when I just let the Lord bathe me, it changes me. It makes me feel better. Do you know, I have the ability. What's that, what's that Christian show again? The one that people talk about? I, I still hadn't seen it yet. The Chosen. But everybody said, how many, anybody saw it yet? What's wrong with our church? Anyway, I'm sorry. I want to lie. There's, are you, who, somebody raise your hand. Who saw it? Did you like it? I saw a little bit of it. Okay, well, a little bit. Did you walk out of the theater or something? Anyway, you, but anyway. I'm talking about the show. Oh, no, no, no. Not the show. It's a. Uh, it's a series. Oh, no, no. There's a movie with. Uh, oh, the one. The movie. Kelsey Grammer. Oh, okay. Oh, so nobody saw it. Look at you. <laughs> it's supposed to be a really fantastic movie. Of course, you know, it's about, it's really neat. You know, it's, it's about the hippies. And, 
It's, yeah, Jesus Revolution. Okay. And so it's supposed to be a really, really fantastic show, but it's actually true life. And um, it, it's, it's supposed to, but anyway, the reason I'm talking about this is the Lord has given me the ability I can watch a Christian movie or I can watch something like The Passion, you know, when that re renews or revives, you know. I can watch a secular show and I can still hear the Lord. I can watch John Wick and, and get fired up about Jesus. I mean, you say, what? <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying that I look for nuggets in everything that's out there. Because why? The devil stole and counterfeits what God's already made. Isn't that right? So, anyway, uh, so he restored my soul, but he leads me in the path of righteousness. But see, it says paths with an S. Several paths. Not decision, like, not like there's several ways of Jesus and God. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying it's not just going to be one thing. He's got several ways to bless you. There's several ways, but it's his righteousness. He wants to bless you. He wants to increase you. Amen. He wants to give you what your heart's desire is. And you know why? Because the next four words, I believe four or five words are, for his name's sake. Amen? Let me go ahead and read the rest of this, and then I'm going to come back and right there, his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow, uh, shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your pay, your, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over, which is the title of the sermon. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Correct? So, back to for his name's sake. Now, think about it. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. And I mentioned this show the other day. How many saw Sister Act? Remember the original? Just a few of y'all? You remember when she was asked to pray what she said? Though I walk to the shally, uh, shadow of the valley of no food, I will fear no hunger. Okay, now, because she didn't know what she was saying. And I bless this to get ready to eat. And for the and she starts doing the Pledge of Allegiance and some other things, because whatever. But watch. When you think about, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, now, here's the thing. There's the enemies out there. Okay? But it's nothing more than a shadow. That's right. It can't touch you if you believe. Amen. A shadow, uh, now I want you to imagine this in your mind. Something casts a shadow. A shadow can't hurt you unless you confess it into your life. Then whatever's throwing the shadow is going to come at you. But it can't have any power unless you give it power. Amen? If you're going through something, it ain't going to last long. You're coming out of there. Amen? And, uh, because, and then it says, I will fear no evil. Okay? Because you are with me. Now what's so cool is your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now the word... The, a lot of people teach a lot of different things, but I want to show you what, what I got out of the Hebrew. The word rod, of course, means to protect. Staff means to guide. In other words, that he's got something there. He's going to lead and guide you, but he's also going to protect you and use nunchucks on somebody. In other words, he, it's going to protect you. Amen? He's going to take care of you. He's going to bless you. Amen? And so we, we've got to get that on the inside of us that God wants what's best for you. Amen? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, if there's people that's messing with you, don't jump in and defend, defend yourself. Let God defend you, and guess what? He'll glorify you in front of them and make them mad. Amen? Amen? How many can use some of that? Right? 
you anoint my head with oil. Now that would take me a long time to minister about because there's so much with that. But when you think of the oil, just think Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Ghost. Being, you know, full of the Holy Spirit. Now, my cup runs over. And there's people that feel like their cup's empty. But through the Holy Ghost, He can cause it to flood over. And whichever area you're believing God for. Remember, don't just pray for a job. Pray for the perfect job. Amen? Don't just pray for a mate. Pray for the perfect one. Pray for one that's going to bless your life. Amen? Um, my cup runs over you got to realize God never puts just enough. He's an overflowing God. Amen? We've all went through things where we doubt God. And my wife, she was talking about how certain things happen. And I've doubted a lot of different things. And I've really got frustrated and even said some things I regret. But I've never... I can't ever think, and I can't can't think of anything where I've ever thought he didn't exist. Here's what I thought: I thought he was angry with me, which is not true. It even says that I, I we can go through a lot. Of, me and Dana did this one time. We went through scripture, scripture, scripture. I mean, it talks about how he is not mad at you. He's putting that away. He's put it away. As a matter of fact, you should talk. You should talk about that next Wednesday. How God's not mad at you. You say, unless you say, got your own thing. But anyway, I don't know how it just came to me. Anyway, I'm not trying to throw something in your head, but I sure would like you to preach on that anyway. No. <laughs> but you know, isn't it amazing that he says, my cup runs over, right? The very next thing is something we say all the time. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. Right? I remember the faith guys, all the stuff back, this is way back. All these talk about surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. It means run you down and chase you over with his goodness. Now, I need to keep saying this. If this is not happening, we need to reflect on why. You need to reflect on why. Alright. Uh, oh, I want to say something so bad, but I just don't know if I should. Hey, can you, uh, who said, do oh, it? Sound evil. <laughs> do it. Erica. Erica. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're fixing to do communion, and I'm, I'm about through here, but I want to show you something about God's goodness. I'm just, just going to show you. Like the job I have right now, I really appreciate it. I like it. I mean, God, I mean, Jimmy's dad didn't have to give me that job. He could have got somebody young, strong, fast, you know, which I'm none of those three. I am strong, but the other, other ones. But, um, but the thing is, he's blessing me in spite. Amen. And I was settled with that. I was fine with that. Okay, I got this job. I got this and that. And I can't go through the whole thing because of time. But I need to say this. I had an encounter with a person a day or two ago. And I, matter of fact, I think I even told Jimmy that I felt like I'm in the wilderness. Did I say that this morning? Yes. Okay. He's like, I'm not sure. I don't know who you are right now. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one big blur. But anyway, but the thing was, this person talked to me and he said, the Lord has a word for you. And he says, you need to seek that word out. And I went, okay. I mean, I pray already, but sometimes we got to actually seek God's face in a way until we get the answer. So I was thinking, okay, I'll, 
uh, I'll wait till I don't have that week Easter. I mean, I got to work, so I can't, you know, whatever. Uh, so I said, wait, I, I can't this weekend. I got at least a weekend. Uh, next weekend, I'll do it. I couldn't wait. So I got up like ridiculously early this morning. Ridiculously. I had to. And I just, I probably cried three or four times this morning praying and talking to God and saying things and asking him questions. But I said, God, I need to know. I said, Lord, if you want me working where I'm at right now, I said, I will work there and smile and love it. And this is what I'm going to do and with the church and do this. I said, if, I said, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I need to know. I said, I feel like something's missing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this guy's name out loud because he already knows about it. I went to his father this morning. And I said, Jimmy. Um, he's, he's Jimmy also. <laughs> and I, I said some things to him and, and I just opened up to him and he's, he's, he's a man, he's a man of God. He really is. Um, but I looked at him and he, he deals with a lot of things, but he looked at me and goes, you know, you're a preacher and you're supposed to be a preacher. You're good at it. And you need to be in the ministry. And I just, I think, man, I must suck at my job. He wants me out of here. And I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> and he, but you know, and so he just, but he, he, he really helped me with the question I was asking. Okay. So I said, okay, you know, and so I go to work and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I said, do you want me in the ministry or do you want me doing this? I mean, God, I'll do anything. I don't care. So I get a phone call at lunch, but I can't answer it. We're working and and I checked it, the voicemail, and it's a job offer in the ministry. And I went, okay. So I went and talked to Big Jimmy about it. So can I talk to you? I, I, I explained to him what it was and who it's with and all this. And he went, man, you better do that. He said, man, you make more money. You're working 40 hours a week. You're doing this and blah, blah, blah. You know who it's with? It's with the mission. Okay. And, and I turned this job down before, but they're offering me more and other things and all this other kind of stuff. And it's all that. And I went, okay, Lord, I guess you want me in the ministry. I start on the 17th. And so I talked to you know, Big Jimmy, and he said, man, you need to take this. You need to do this. He said, and if you don't like it, come on back and dig ditches with us. <laughs> I swear he said that. Actually, he'll be here this Sunday for Easter Sunday. And, uh, but I started thinking, okay, God, you answered that in five hours. Now, is this the ultimate answer to what I'm asking? No, because here's the thing. I realize something more and more i deeply desire this house to grow Amen. whatever the cost and whatever it takes to do it mm -hmm. i don't mean growth in like millions of people i'm talking about growth here within y'all's hearts mm -hmm. within our hearts right our lives and to see what god does and for us to move and to see things begin to change and for people to get healthy and signs, miracles, and wonders, and, and, and lives change. Amen? Amen? So, if we do that, with surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, you know when it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Everybody thinks that means when I die and go to heaven. Right now, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Who, okay, you're the house. That's right. He's residing in you. Now watch, if he's with you, you're an heir and you have a right to your cup running over right. tonight. Amen. And whatever area you're believing God for, you have that right and you have the belief. Yes. I was talking to my wife. There's two or three people that I want to have come preach at this church. 
and I, and I talked to her about it, and I, I'm going to give the announcement later. But I pretty much got two of them nailed down. I want these three people to preach here. I think you'll really like it. And I want I want to see God do whatever God does. It's going to bless our lives. Amen. Amen. And being that it's Passover, uh, can we go ahead and pass out to communion and we're going to pray over that? It's 7.23. Where is the communion at? She don't look like communion to me. She's she little enough to eat. She's about that big. <laughs> but you know what? With with the communion being passed out, the Bible talks about examining your heart, right? Not for what most people teach of uh, getting rid of sin and all. I'm talking about examine your heart. What do you want God to do? What do you believe in God to do? Amen. When you when we take this communion believe for it and like if you get as soon as you get done taking it go you know nothing happened you know what don't do that believe god to do it and you may, you may stand up at your seat and get your miracle you may walk out of this door and get your miracle you may get it when you go to bed tonight amen if, if, if it's financial god can give it to you so many ways it's unreal but here's what i found you want a miracle from god seek his face Seek his face. If, 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 you know, it, hmm. Amy worked at a place and she was making really good money and she was doing really well, but they wanted her to make certain commitments that she wouldn't miss any work. And I understand that. But she has to leave a certain amount of times because of who Avery is. She has to go to cooks and different things. And these are these are appointments she has to take that baby to. And she was getting promoted left and right, but she walked away from that job. Thank you, sir. I've never had our usher, I needed my ushers to escort this man out. But uh, the um, with um, what was I saying? Was anybody listening? Amy. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she walked away. That threw me off so bad. Amen. Uh, she walked away from that job because she. Cared about that baby. But you know what's amazing? The husband she got takes care of her financially in such a way she can do anything she wants with that kid. Right. Amen? She made a decision that others probably thought, you should, that's the dumbest thing you could ever do. God knew. Hey, she chose her kid first. Amen? Sometimes people aren't going to agree with your decisions. But they're not in your shoes. They don't know what you're going through. Right. You know, I know, I know. I I prophesied over you, Delilah and Johnny, and I said, "Hey, I know, I know how I said God's going to fix all that and everything." But and I'm going to even revise it more that sometimes I know it seems like I'm going to have to settle. You're not going to have to settle. It's going to be better than you imagine when you step to the next phase. Better than you imagine. Amen. How many want some better than you can imagine? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Better than you can imagine. Let's step into the next phase. Amen? Amen? Let's believe God. Let's stand up. Praise God. And you can get her ready.
Praise God. Now, of course, in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 24, and 25, it talks about the body of Christ. It talks about the blood of Jesus. Amen? But I want to do one better than that. Or not better than that, but I, mean, I, want, to, I want to say something. Um, I would like... I would like Dana and Elizabeth to come up and pray for one and the other because the Lord told me to do that earlier. And whichever one, of course, would be, y'all come up. I would like, huh? You'll do the bread? Okay. Never mind. So you go ahead and. Oh, and when we do this, and after they pray, you go ahead and eat it, and after Dana prays, and you drink it, and then I'll pray over what they pray. Amen? But y'all come up to the pulpit, and I'm going to lay this right here, that way we can hear each one of you. Can I put the little microphone there? I was just reading about communion a couple of days ago, and I had no idea here I was going to do this today, but... You know, a lot of times we forget what communion actually is good for. And, you know, the, the world tries to, there's imitations like Pastor Gary was talking about, you know, but, you know, like you've heard there's some cultures where they believe if you eat the heart of whatever, you become that spirit. That is a counterfeit because you can't find life in that, but you can find life in the bread. And in the in the blood, and when we take communion, is to help us to remember what Jesus did. But not only that, it's when you take the bread. Hold on, my. When you take this, you are taking Jesus into your body. In other words, you are taking healing into your body. When he got those stripes on his back when he hung on the cross, when that, that crown of thorns was shoved on his head, all of that, this, you just need to believe. See, everything is based on faith in Christianity. That's right. The counterfeit is, hey, you eat the heart of this, then you get that spirit. That is works. This right here is there's no work in it. Because Jesus has already done it. And all we have to do is believe what the bread says. Amen. 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 So I thank you, Father, as we just take this, Father's remembrance, Father, of what you did for everything that you did for us. And I thank you, Father, as we take this, that we do this right now, knowing that what it is that we need in our body. And I thank you, Father, that as we take this, we believe in what the word says. And we believe what it is that you did. So everybody take it. Amen. I remember uh, one time here, uh, probably Jesse the planter say that when you put the bread in your mouth and in the Catholic custom, you don't chew it. You just kind of let it melt and then you swallow it. And <laughs> Jesse, when he took the money, he started chewing it. Somebody yelled at him, Don't chew, Jesus! <laughs> Don't chew, <shoot> Jesus. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I'm sorry. But, uh, uh, but the Jewish uh, custom in, in this ceremony, uh, it was at the end of a long negotiation when two families came together, typically in a marriage. And uh, one of the things that, that they said on the bread is that if I have to give you the flesh of my own body, that's what it symbolized, so that you may live, then that's what I will do. They, they made that with a the family they were making covenant with. And so, you know, that's basically what Jesus did. I mean, he gave his body that we might live. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the blood. He said, he basically said that, you know, the promises before a covenant supper.
never happened. It happened at the end of the ceremony when the two families were joined together or the marriage happened. When they did that, they, they made promises to each other. One, one family might say, if you, hey, if you need finances, I'll give you finances. The other one say, if, you, if enemies come against you, then I'll provide soldiers to fight your enemies with. Well, Jesus made us some, uh, made us some promises, man. They're all contained right here. And he said, I'm going to give my life's blood to make it come to pass. Hallelujah. And so that's what, the, that's what the, the symbolism is behind this, is that Jesus has already said, and he said, do this in remembrance of me, that I've made promises to you that I gave my life and my body to bring it to pass. So as we take his blood, remember that anything in that word that you can find, Jesus gave his body and he gave his life's blood to bring it to pass. Heavenly Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for being able to commune with you, Father, on this Passover. I thank you, Father, as you bless every individual here, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that even as we've done this, right now people are even picturing what they're desiring. They're believing God for certain things right now. There are people believing God for certain things to happen. And I, I'm speaking it. I'm believing it, Lord. I pray, Father, that you empower us, God, and we not forget and like, Lord, even tomorrow on Thursday and then Good Friday and then Saturday and then Easter. Father, I thank you, Father, that, that as every day goes by, they get stronger and better. Amen. And people are empowered and they're falling in love with the word and falling in love with you. And I thank you for blessing us and strengthening us, Lord. I pray, Father, as you just move within us, Jesus. I thank you for your goodness. Everybody just tell him, I thank you for your goodness. And uh, I'm not trying to lead you through something, but I want I want you right now, just for this few seconds, I want you to think about what I'm saying. I want you to actually say it. I want you to, in your, in, Lord, I want you to say, speak to me what you want me to do. And he'll show you. Speak to me what you want me to do. And protect me from what you don't want me in. Yes. And he will do it. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you and I thank you. I thank you for your goodness. 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 And I pray, Lord, that you have pour out your blessing on us, God. And I plead your blood right now. And all Jesus' people said, Amen. 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 Amen.